Hey, I'm Eric Perkins, and on today's video, we're gonna talk about footings and piers. Now, let me tell you a little story. I had an experience the other day, and that's why I'm making this video. I went and did a little consulting gig for a guy, and his deck was going off the mountain because it was put on piers that were formed up on top of fill dirt, and with erosion and the fill dirt settling, this deck, along with the posts, was going off the mountain. And it's not the first one I've seen like that. There is decks all over the place where the footings or the piers were just done very shoddily. And I don't know if they were inspected, probably not. But the soil that your house or your deck is sitting on is as important as anything else you're doing in the building. So I thought it would be a crucial thing to talk about and make a video about testing the soil, looking in the code book to see what size footings or what size piers you should actually be using and then doing it right, making it the right size, right thickness on the right soil. So I'm gonna show you how to use this today. This is a soil probe and it's something you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's for like 30 bucks. All it is is a T-bar, a fiberglass shaft, and then it's got a semi-sharp point on it, metal, kind of like a bullet. And what this is intended to do is test the compaction of the soil so that you know whether it's good or not. Um, there are more complicated devices that will measure the actual PSI of the soil so that you know exactly. But if you have one of these, you should be able to tell pretty well whether it's going to pass code or not. And that's why I do it before the inspector shows up. I probe the footings with my own so when he shows up, I know I'm going to pass. All right, you can see that this soil here is pretty good. It only sinks maybe an inch into the ground before the shaft starts to bend. And that tells me that this is good soil, it is firm ground, and it will hold the house. Let's walk around back here and I'll show you some soil that isn't as good, but a lot of people still put footings on soil like this. Let's go over here. Here we got some soil that we backfilled behind this rock wall. And it, it looks pretty good. If you stomp on it, it feels pretty good. But let's use a tool to test it. Well, there's a rock. Okay, there we go. Okay. So you can see that if I was to try to put a pier or a footing right here, it would not pass code. In fact, it would settle and the whole deck would collapse. And that's the problem is if you don't test it with something like this, you might never know that the ground you're putting your footing on is no good. So I'd really recommend getting one of these if you don't already have one and you plan on digging any kind of footings or piers for anything you're building, just take a quick second and check the soil. This was a gift to me by a building inspector. So I cherish this thing. It's not often that you get a building inspector to give you a present, but I always keep it with me in my truck. That's my baby. Okay, so I do wanna mention one other thing is that if you have soil like this or similar to this that's sandy or soft, you can get an engineer to engineer you a special footing or pier, and he will calculate the load and make a bigger or thicker footing so that it will support the load to where it'll actually work if you have a special situation that this regular test fails. Like a bike pump. <laughs> All right, so the footings we did here, we actually... <laughs> so, all right, so the footings we did right here, we actually hand dug them, even though we got a machine sitting right there, because a lot of times if you dig them with a machine, you'll end up with a hole that's way bigger than you need. Uh, right here, we just needed two foot by two foot, and we didn't need a three foot by four foot or whatever. Having to come in with the arc of the machine like this, you always end up with a way bigger hole than you need. And we were mixing the concrete by hand for this. So we hand dug these. If you're gonna hand dig them, make sure you get them down to solid ground. Even though it's hard work, you have to get original soil or else soil that will at least pass this test to hold your deck or your house up. Secondly, when you're digging your footings down, make sure they don't taper in at the bottom. If you need two foot wide and you start two foot wide at the top, and then you taper in to where you only have a foot wide at the bottom, that pier will not hold as much weight. Also, I like to get the bottom completely flat if possible. That will support the load the best. If you're angled, they may want to actually slide under the soil one way or the other later on. So you want it perfectly flat on the bottom as well. If you put all these things together, you will be ensured that the deck or the house you're building will still be there five years from now or a hundred years from now. <laughs> all right, if you wanna know more technical things about footings and all kinds of other building stuff, you can look in your code book. This is the 2018 North Carolina Residential Building Code Book. And in here, you can find all kind of pre-engineered building systems. And that's what this is basically. 
is a book of pre-engineered building systems for your use that they already know will pass code because they've been pre-engineered. Now, if you get something engineered by someone else, it will usually trump this, but you'll have to have that stamp that says a real engineer did it. Okay, let's look in the code book here. We're gonna go to section four, foundations. If you wanna know about piers and footings, look in here. This will tell you depending on how many stories that your pier is carrying and the tributary area that you can calculate doing a little math, the size of the footing that you need. So that's very helpful. And if you go up here, you can look up the size of the footing you would need for actual house. So depending on how stiff or solid your soil is, it has different categories here on the load bearing value. It tells you the width of the footings that are needed for one story, two story, or three story houses. Chapter four foundations, you will also find the load bearing values of different kinds of soil and stone. There's also an interesting section down here about soil tests. And we had to, this come up one time. Basically this says if the building official, the inspector doesn't know or is on the fence about whether your soil is good enough for what you're doing, you will have to hire a third party to come out and check the soil with a very much more sensitive type tool. Okay, we did have this happen to us one time where an inspector was testing our soil and it had soft spots, kind of like there was old tree stumps or something below grade. And so we had to get an engineer to come out with a specialized piece of equipment that tested the load bearing value of the soil in a bunch of places on our job. The inspector said we had to do it and they're not paying for it. We had to pay for it. So we had to do that. So your inspector is allowed to throw that on you if he feels like he can't determine good enough whether your soil is good enough by himself. Also, you will find in section four, the compressive values of the concrete needed for different weathering situations. That is handy. Okay, and as well as the charts in chapter four about the footings, there is many detailed drawings uh, about how exactly your footings should be built. All right, while we're in the code book, I wanna talk about one thing that you won't see in this code book about footings, at least in my code book for this area, and that's requirement for steel. In this area, it's actually not required, but we do it anyway. We do two rows of number five steel in the footings, unless the soil has a soft spot, and then we'll do three or four or more because it's really cheap insurance to make sure your house isn't going anywhere. All right, now I wanna to touch on a lot of different areas here. One important thing is that your footings are the right depth below the top of the soil so that when the ground freezes, it doesn't push the footings up. Okay, that's important. In our area, you only have to be a foot below grade for this, but up north where it's a lot colder for a lot longer, you have to be way below grade with the bottom of your footings so that they don't get pushed up by frozen ground. All right, when we're digging footings for the whole house, we almost always use a 24 inch wide traco bucket. That's what our machine operator has on his machine for one. And number two, I'm okay with having footings that are a little wider than required so that we make sure the block actually hits the footing. Because when you dig footings in the ground, sometimes they do this because of the earth, the traco bucket gets steered around by rocks and such. So it's okay to be a little wide. Can I dry pour it? No, you have to mix the concrete with water. It doesn't work. Don't pour the concrete in the ground dry. Hey, thanks for watching our video today. Remember to subscribe and click the bell so you'll get all of our future videos about awesome construction stuff. See ya.